Hi there, so in this video tutorial, I'm going to show the save and load from Java. Uh, I'm a Python person, but, so, but if you want to make web pages, you're going to have to learn how to use Java to at least to a certain extent. So let's get started. So here is my, um, my browsers on my right hand side and my, um, my coder. My, um, I'm using uh, VS Code as, as my interpreter, as on my left hand side. So if I type in something here, let's, let's say I type in name uh, here and I save it. It shows up here on the right hand side. So, so what we're going to do, we're going to do most of our work in, in, the, in our body. So, so first thing we need to need is we need an, we need some um, inputs. So let's type in uh, first. That'll be our first input, and let's type in um, our input. Okay, so we have our first input. Our inputs can be text, and we probably want to give it an ID. An ID is sort of high, with this entire thing right here. This is an element. That's an element. These are all elements, right? That's an element, and this is an element. So this here is an element, and we need to target that specific element. So we're going to give it an ID, and we're going to call that ID name here. And just so you know, there's another, there's another um, attribute. These, these ones inside here, this here, and this here. These are all attributes inside this element. So just so you know, there exists a tr an attribute called value. And um, I'm, I'm just writing it, writing it in here. I'm just showing that it does exist. Um, first of all, let me just save this. So over here, here is the element right here. It's, it shows up as a textbook, uh, as a text box, and this is where we're going to be entering our information. So whatever I put inside here, and I save it, it shows up inside here. So you know that there is an attribute called value, but for our purpose, for our purpose sake, we're just going to leave it blank. So it's because the thing is, we want to extract information from here into our function. So we're just going to leave it blank. And uh, chances are you're going to be extracting more than one piece of information. So I'm going to make another um, another element, and let's call this last, like in first name and last name. And let's call this name one, and this one name two. And let's save that. We have our first and last name, and then we probably need a button. Uh, let's put our button down over here. Just, just give it a bit of a break. So some spacing in between. Input. And in this box, we type in button. And uh, we probably want to label this button, give it a value. And um, let's call it um, save. Because apparently this, this uh, tutorial, I'm showing how to save and load. So let's do that. Here's the button save, and as you can see, it does absolutely nothing right now. So we can drop stuff in here and hit save, it does nothing. <laughs> so to get it to do something, we have to make a function. So uh, to make a function, we need to run uh, a JavaScript, unfortunately. <laughs> so down here, you type in script, and this is your JavaScript. I'm just going to label this with a comment, JavaScript. Uh, I prefer doing my JavaScript in the HTML page. You can do it outside the HTML, HTML page, but I'd rather do it inside because I find it goes faster and it's just easier in general just to, to debug things. So inside this uh, script, we need to make a function, but we need to give it, we need to give a name to our function. So here, uh, there's another attribute called on click. There's a couple of them. There's like on click down and on click up, but the one we're gonna use is on click. And I'm gonna give her uh, the name of her function. It's called save underscore func, and it needs that needs those brackets here. And it, it turns yellow, indicating that it is a function. Let's copy that name. Let's put it over here, paste, and uh, let's do that because apparently you need this syntax right here for it to work. And so whatever I go in, whatever goes inside here. It gets run whenever I click this button. So, for instance, and just to be testing this, I'll be using the the um, alert sort of um, uh, I don't know what it's called, but it, I'm using alert here, and let's say test. And so it's just to debug this to see, to see if it works. So if I if I press uh, if I press save, it runs this function, and this function will activate this alert here. So I hit this. It shows right here a test. So it's working. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get the information that's in these boxes. And to get those information, you need to target the ID. 
So this is how the syntax goes. First of all, let's, let's, give, let's, let's make some variable names. Let's call this first variable name, and underneath that, oops. Actually, let's just do the first one. So it's document, apparently that's that's how you do it. You type in document, get element by ID, and it's oh, for some reason it's always ID. It's not by class or, or anything else. Apparently, if you want to run, run JavaScript, you're going to always have to use get element by ID. And the name of our ID, we, over here, we call it name1. Name1. There we go. So this here, right here, this rem this refers to the element itself, right? So that doesn't mean anything unless you put a dot and an attribute. And I guess this attribute is value, because we want the value inside here. So now you're targeting. Now you're getting the value inside this box. Let's do the same thing for um, the other box last. And you, gotta, you for some reason you gotta hit semicolon at the end of these to indicate it's the end of the, the the line of code. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. This is gonna be called name two, and let's call this last. You can, you can name it anything you want, but I, I would I would suggest you name it something that's easy to remember. So now we are grabbing the stuff inside these box. So let's say zero and let's say jerky here, and now it's saved into this variable. Zero saved in here, jerky saved into here, right? And just to test that, like in, in JavaScript, and, and when you're doing this, when you're working in JavaScript, you're gonna have to test all the time. So I'm gonna type in here alert. And first, and let's give it, let's put a plus sign here, plus signs, because then let's space it out. Space, space, space. When you put a plus sign, that's basically c concatenating. So you're putting, well, you'll see. So I'm using the alert just to test it out. I have your first, I have your last here. Um, again, zero, and then call it jerky. And if you hit this, it shows up here. Zero, and this is the space that we made, and then jerky. Here's zero, the space we made, and jerky. So that is how we get the information from those boxes. So chances are you're gonna be putting this information in a list. So let's uh, make another variable. And let's call it data. Here. And what we want to do is we're going to put this information inside this list because you need you need a list. Well, you don't need a list, but I suggest you use a list to save all your information, like all your information in general, and then uh, and then you extract extract the information later. So we're gonna have to push all this information to the list. So we're using the so we'll be using the push command. So you type in data dot push, and this is how you put stuff inside the list first. And now when you do this command, I'm gonna put a comma here, uh, a comment here, just to, just so you know it's the first, it's the first element here. So now that's in that list there, and just to test it out, I'm gonna type in alert data, alert data right there, and if I hit, uh, let's say another name zero, hit save. It shows up here. This is the this is the data. This is the data list, and this shows a list. I'm gonna be pushing another the, the second name, data, push, and uh, underneath here I'm gonna be putting last. And just to, as a reference sake, because you want to, you need to remember where you put everything. That's why I'm putting these comments here, so I remember. Everything. This is all, this is the first part of the list, and that's the second part of the list. So I'm gonna here. I'm gonna type in jer zero jerky, and if I hit enter here, you see zero right here. That's the first. Uh, that's the first part of the list. That's the first uh, location, and jerky is in the second location. And it's good to put these comma comments here. So you know exactly where they're located. Okay, now for the saving part. Now this is this is the this is the part that you're probably waiting for and how to save stuff. So you have to you have to make an anchor tag to save all that information. And so what we're gonna do after we pushed all that stuff in there, we are going to make another element, another variable var, and we're gonna call it file. So basically, this is the file here, and we're gonna say new blob I believe blob is well this 
there's, there's other ways of saving, but this is the way I found to work, right? So I'm just showing the way I got it to work. I'm sure there's other ways out there, so if you want to do some use other ways, by all means, but this is the way I got it to work. And I got it to work by using a string. So the syntax goes like this. Um, you want to do something like this, blob, right? And then you want to put a list inside the blob, and you want to put uh, the type. Apparently, you have to use these curly brackets for the type. And uh, they said, yeah, so type in um, type equals text. You see that here? Type equals text. So that is what you want to do. And um, so basically, the data, this data information is going to go inside here, inside, this, inside these brackets. But you need to stringify it. You need to turn it into a string. Because a list is a list. It's not a string. It's not a text. It's a list. Right? So apparently you have to turn it into a string in, for, in order for you to put it inside here. So that's what I'm going to do here, right here, right above. I'm just going to say, um, let's give it a variable. Let's call it var uh, data string. So to convert all your data, to convert the list into data, we're going to be using JSON dot stringify and inside here we're gonna put data okay good so now again I should you should be putting these semicolons here to indicate it's the end of the, the line of code here and over here so now this variable is now a string so previously it was a list now it's a string and what we're going to do is we're going to put this string inside here. So let's call it data string. There we go, data string. So now, um, now we put it, now we made a new blob and we put our information into, the, into there. Good. So the next step is to make an anchor. An anchor is basically like a link. Like when you click on something, it, um, it directs you to a picture or directs you to a new website. Basically, you're making a link, right? I, I'm calling it an anchor because it'd be using an anchor tag for that. So it's called anchor here. And essentially, what we're doing is we are making an anchor tag. So we're going to use the word um, what is here? document dot create element. So we're creating an element. Which, which again are these things here? These all these little tags here, all these tags are all, all they're all elements. So we are creating an element, and we are going to call our element just a. We're not going to call it anything else. We're just going to call it a. You can call it something. You can call it whatever you want, but I, I suggest you keep it simple. So I'm calling my I'm calling my um. I'm calling my anchor tag a. Oh, hold on, let me just take a look at my notes in a sec. Sorry, my uh. Here we go. Yeah. So uh, inside uh, our anchor tag, like I said, there's stuff inside. There's, there's, there's these attributes inside these elements, and there's an attribute called href inside an anchor tag or inside any element. Is href. So we need to make an attribute uh, inside this anchor tag called h uh, href. So we do that by just saying anchor dot h ref equals and again it's the h sorry about that it's a you type in url and we're creating an object dot create object url create object url and what we're inside here we are going to put our anchor tag um yeah, we're putting our file, sorry, our file. So again, this is where you put this is where we put all our data. So our data is here, file, and we put our data inside here because we, we created an href. So essentially in the set, like well, I'm gonna put it over here just, just to, to clarify things. So let's say www dot um, something dot com and then over here will be like j um picture pick dot jpeg right this here is this here will be referred to the data right here that data here so essentially when you you create an anchor tag which is basically this 
Well, well, basically, it's just an anchor tag, and then href is basically referring to this. Basically, the, the where the website is, and this file refers to the last part of this website. Well, I'm sure you'll figure it out. So that's uh, that's the first part, and uh, the second part is we need to. Well, here, this is something optional, but I suggest you give it a download name. So anchor dot download equals and you just give it a name. You can give it any name you want. It's called save dot text because essentially, essentially we are working with text. Like we, the whole point of doing this stringify is to turn it into a text. You can turn it into other stuff, but I suggest you use stringify for text because text is a lot more easier and easier to work with. And the very last part of this is to use anchor dot click. So essentially, you're simulating a clicking event on this anchor. And that's it. That's how you. Uh, let's see if this works, right? Let's say let's save this. Let's say Bob and Jerky. Bit save. Okay. So the reason it's not working is because we went wrong somewhere. Uh, let's see here. No, no. Everything is right. Everything is absolutely right. I don't see any mistakes anywhere. Data string. Okay, so here's a good opportunity to show you where, where you can look for mistakes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type in alert and test. So we're going to see if it works here. No, oh, apparently it's not working there either. Oh, maybe I have to... And this is saved. Let's cut that. Let's put it over here, paste. Let's see if it works. Oh, it's not working there either. Anyway, somewhere we made a mistake somewhere around here. It's, it's, it's sort of hard. What I suggest you do is you you can just comment these out and write this here to see where, if it works or not. So it looks like it works from here to here, right? Let's uncomment this and let's see if it works. I'm gonna get this alert tag. Let's copy and paste it over here. And now let's see if it works. Looks like it's still working. That's good. Right, let's, it could be this part over here. Let's cut. This is the reason why I don't like Java. Okay, it's still working. That's good. So maybe it's this part here that that's is giving us the trouble. I know it's a lot of I know this is a big uh, bit of a pain, but up oh, looks like yeah, it's this line here. So we made a mistake somewhere on this line. So let me just refer to my notes, make sure that I wrote this line properly. Okay, it is uh new fuck var equals new file, okay, new blob. Um, that looks right. Type. Oh, okay, there we go. I see. Right. Apparently, there's no equal sign. There's only a semicolon right there. So, it is type semicolon and it's text. Okay, so, that's our mistake right there. Is this... What is this? Yeah, I, I downloaded Kite, and that's why all these things are always popping up on my screen. I know it's annoying. I gotta get rid of it. Uh, okay, let's see if this works. You have our alert down here. Okay, it looks like it's working, so that that's probably our our problem. Let us uncomment all this. There we go. Save, and uh, let's see if it works. And it works. So that's the end of this video tutorial. In the next video tutorial, I'll show you how to extract that information from what we saved. Oops, we saved it there. Okay.